Welcome dear Academians! In today's video we will cover everything about positioning in CSS. So by the end of this video you will be able to position everything with CSS like a real CSS ninja. If you don't want to miss out on further educational content, please subscribe to this channel. And now, without a further ado, let's get started. We have our starting HTML markup on the left side, and I applied some styles for greater visibility. Let's start by checking the default position value of HTML elements. If you open up the console, inspect any element on the page, go to the Computed tab and filter for position, You can see that the default value is static. Static means that everything appears in the layout as it appears in the document flow. So as you can see, we have a div that contains a span and three divs. And it's represented just like that in the layout. Now let's take a look at position relative. So open up our CSS file and for the second child div, I will give position relative. If we hit save, then we can see that nothing serious happened. The reason for it is that relatively positioned element take their place that they would in the regular document flow. The trick here is that we can position our HTML element relatively where it would be in the document flow. For this, CSS gives us four attributes that we can play with. Top, left, bottom and right. By modifying these values, we can alter the position of our element relatively to where it would be if it would be static. For example, if we go ahead and say left 20 pixels and hit save, we can see that our HTML element is pushed to the right with 20 pixels. This is happening because left 20 pixels gives 20 pixel wide offset to the left side of our HTML element. So this will be a 20 pixel gap. As you can see, our div is now not part of the standard document flow because it overflows its parent. Or if we modify to 30 pixels, it will be more obvious. To better demonstrate it, if we go ahead and give it a top offset of 40 pixels, we can see that the position of this relatively positioned element is not affecting the other elements, so it's not part of the document flow. So this is what position relative does, but we rarely use position relative on its own, but we will get back to it in a bit. Now let's take a look at position absolute. So if we go ahead and change this, second this positioning to absolute and hit save, we can see that some weird thing happened. You can notice that our second div is actually removed from the document flow and it is on the top of our third child div. This is what position absolute does. It gets our HTML element out completely from the document flow. Position absolute also gives us the possibility to use the top left, right and bottom attributes. So if we go ahead and do top zero, we can see an interesting thing happened. Our second div is now positioned relatively to the body of the document. So if we go and say right zero, it will go to the top right corner. This is because position absolute goes up in the DOM tree and search for any parents that has positioning besides static, and we'll use it to relatively position itself to. If it does not find any, then it will position itself to the body of the document. So for example, if we go to our container and set its position to relative, now our absolutely positioned element finds its parent, which have position relative, and now that will be the anchor point of our absolutely positioned element. Please note that we, this will work with any position values besides static. And this is what makes position relative so useful. We most often use position relative to specify which element we would like to absolutely position our other element to. 
Maybe you are wondering in which cases we would use position absolute. Position absolute is most commonly used when we don't want the document flow to control our component. So in cases when we want the content to stick out. Great examples are tooltips and models. Next we will check position fixed. So if we go ahead and change our second div's position to fixed and remove the relative from the container, we can see that it pretty much looks the same as the absolute positioning. The trick comes when we add some height to our page. So I go to our container and set its height to 300 viewport height. So we can scroll the page three times. Now if we go and scroll down, we can see that our element that has fixed position is staying at the same place. We can have the intuition that if we go and add position relative to our container, it will be relative to that. But this is not the case because fixed positioning is always relative to the viewport. So our browser windows content area basically. So here relative positioning won't do anything, so we can remove it. We can also use the top left, right and bottom values. So for example, if I say top 20 pixels, it will be offsetted from the top of the viewport by 20 pixels. And if I go and say left zero, it will be on the left. So in this case, we have a fixed div on the left side of our page, offset it a little bit from the top. If we scroll, it stays there relative to the viewport. And as with position absolute, it is completely removed from, from the document flow. The use case for fixed elements can be fixed sign navigation bars or social media links, for example. The last positioning value that we will check is position sticky. So if we go and modify it to have position sticky, then we see that the page looks similar when we use static. And if we scroll, we can see that nothing happens. This is because we don't specify the offsets. So go on and type in top zero pixels and see what happens. At first the layout looks as we would use static, but if we scroll down, we can see that when the top section of our viewport interacts with our sticky element, the position of the sticky element is turned to fixed and behaves like a fixed element. In this case, the sticky element, when it actually sticks, always be relative to the scrolling context. So in this case, it is the body or the viewport, but if it's inside a div which has overflow scroll and the fixed height, it will actually stick to that containing scrolling div. So it actually sticks to the scrolling context. It totally behaves like a fixed position because if we modify the top offset to be 10 pixels, we can see that no offset is being applied. But if we scroll down, we get the offset from the scrolling context, which is the viewport or the body in this case. Sticky elements can be extremely useful for headers that you want to show to the user wherever they are on our page. Or you can clear action bars, which have some actions like copy, paste or delete, and it will scroll with your editor. And this is the end of the video. From now on, you will be able to position any element the way that you like on your website. You're a positioning CSS ninja now.